What's going on guys, Marco here with Front Yard Fantasy and I am bringing you three rebuilding trade targets. I've got three guys that I think you can target in your dynasty leagues right now. And you know, there's one of them that I might be a little bit more difficult to trade for, but we're gonna dive into what you can offer for these guys in just a minute. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We are bringing tons and tons of content each and every week now that we are getting closer and closer to the season. We have, of course, the daily fantasy show that goes on each and every single day uh, of the week uh, that you can always catch JL and the guys on. But we've also got the awesome uh, weekly content that's coming out separate from that just for you to win your fantasy football leagues in 2022 and beyond. All right, guys, so let's jump into our dynasty players. I've got three of them for you. Like I said, the first one is a wide receiver, and it's a wide receiver who has gotten a little bit of hype in this offseason. It's wide receiver for the 49ers, Brandon Ayuk. Now, there is a ton to like about Brandon Ayuk, but obviously last season, he started off slow. He started off in the Shanahan doghouse, which has been uh, pop mid-popular over the last season. We've seen these guys get in trouble and immediately lose playing time, and Brandon Ayuk was a victim of that doghouse last season last season. But the good news is from week eight on, Brandon Ayuk became a staple in this offense, a key cog to what makes this offense go forward, what makes this offense move. Um, and let's break it down a little bit. Obviously, Brandon Ayuk, here's the positives. He is a phenomenal route runner. Athletically, he is really, really a talented player. But because of his route running, because of his development over the last two years, he has really fine-tuned some of the most important parts about being a wide receiver, the football IQ of it all. And if he can you know, make sure that his attitude is in check for this coaching staff. He is going to be a force for your dynasty teams in 2022, but even beyond that. Obviously, the Debo signing means that Brandon Ayuk will not be the number one wide receiver in this team. It, it's something that we talked about in any of my other past videos on Twitter, um, but even with uh, Debo Samuel there, even with uh, George Kittle here in this offense, and even with Trey Lance leading this offense, Brandon Ayuk has a phenomenal opportunity to hit. From week eight on, uh, last season, he never played less than 88% of the snaps for the 49ers, and he saw a targets per game increase from only three targets per game to 6.2 targets per game. And that was with Debo on the field. That was with George Kittle on the field. That was with um, Elijah Mitchell at the running back position. Obviously, Debo was involved there as well. But the other thing that was really important is Debo Samuel's contract incentivizes his rushing, uh, his rushing opportunities, his rushing yardage. And when Debo started getting involved in the run game, what happened was that his targets cut in half. He went from 10 targets a game to five targets a game. So from week eight on till the end of the season, Brandon Ayuk actually out-targeted Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel is obviously a key part of this offense, but Ayuk might be the one who actually starts to lead this team in targets year in and year out, especially because Trey Lance is now leading this team. It's a whole different ball game. Jimmy G is not going to be the quarterback for this team. And all the reports out of camp say that Trey Lance and Brandon Ayuk have chemistry. Obviously, we don't want to dive too much into the offseason hype, but I think it's something worth noting. All right, so what can you trade for Brandon Ayuk? Honestly, there's a lot of things because Brandon Ayuk isn't one of the guys who's super hyped on this team because of Debo Samuel, because of George Kittle, because of Trey Lance. Um, and so really, when I look at what I would be willing to give up for Brandon Ayuk, there's quite a bit. Um, some of the trades I saw recently, uh, Brandon Ayuk go for it was a late 2023 second and obviously, or 2023 first, I apologize. Um, and I know that might seem crazy, but uh, I saw a projected late first round pick in uh, on Twitter go for Brandon Ayuk right now. It looks like it was the 110 to 112 is what's the most likely outcome for that pick. And I'm okay giving the 110 or 112 for Brandon Ayuk because I think Brandon Ayuk is going to be a wide receiver two with upside. And as much as the 2023 class is a class that is full of talent, Brandon Ayuk is still really young and we know he can do it. For me, I like a guy like him who does all of the fine parts, uh, fine tuning parts of a wide receiver well, um, and I'm okay giving up a late first, even if it is in this phenomenal or supposed to be phenomenal class in 2023. It just has more risk. All right, another trade I saw him go for was for Damian Harris and a 2024 second. Obviously, the Damian Harris 
hype and value is kind of on the downward trend because Ramondre Stevenson has been hyped up in camp all offseason. He seems to be a guy who's going to be involved in the passing game. Um, but honestly, either of those two running backs for the Patriots and a 2024 20, second for Brandon Ayuk is a deal I'm making right now. You're going to get more longevity out of Brandon Ayuk. You're going to get more consistency out of Brandon Ayuk. We know the Patriots backfield is one that if you can find the right guy, it's solid. But the reality is you really can't find the right guy that often. All right, so let's move on to the next guy on my list, and it is tight end for the Chicago Bears, Cole Komet. Now, I'll admit I am a Chicago Bears fan, but let's put that aside for a second and look at all of the things that are working in Cole Komet's favor for 2022 and beyond. Number one, he has been slowly developing over the first two years of his career, and now he's entering year three of his career, and we know that that is typically the tight end breakout year. So not that it always has to be that year, but he is it's lining up really well for Cole Komet to have his true breakout season. Justin Fields is looking like he's starting to take some steps forward. He's in a new regime that's starting to utilize and game plan around his skill set, around Darnell Mooney, and specifically around Cole Komet, who all of the coaching staff, all of the offseason reports have said that he has been taking his game to the next level. I think that's key. And then tie that into the fact that Cole Komet is basically a lock to see a 100 and plus, or sorry, 100 plus targets for the Bears in 2022. That means that in 2022, he's immediately bringing you value. When you looked at last season in 2021, there were six tight ends that saw 100 targets. All six were tight end ones. I think the lowest finishing one was tight end nine on the season. So Cole Komet is looking like he is a tight end one for 2022 and beyond, even if they add weapons in 2023, even if they add weapons in 2024. We're finding a big bodied athletic tight end in Cole Komet that could be on the verge of a big breakout. He will never be as cheap as he is right now. And he's also due for the very obvious touchdown re- positive regression because he only scored what I don't think he scored actually any touchdowns in his first two years, maybe one. Um, if I'm if I'm remembering that off the top of my head, but still, he is one of the guy those guys similar to Kyle Pitts. Obviously, very different skill set, but they're both due for an uh, enormous positive touchdown regression with the amount of volume that they are seeing, uh, and with this offense that's starting to scheme around Justin Fields' skill set, around Cole Komet's skill set, and specifically Darnell Mooney's skill set, all three of these guys are probably going way too low in your uh, dynasty startups. And outside of Justin Fields, they're really all undervalued. All right, so what can you trade for Cole Komet? Now, here's the thing. If you are not in a tight end premium league, you're probably not you know, paying out the nose for a tight end in general, especially a tight end who in redraft leagues is going as like tight end 16 right now. So when I look at the value of Cole Komet, here's some things that I'm willing to trade. I'm willing to trade a 2023 20, second. I'm willing to trade uh, an aging wide receiver because, again, we're talking rebuilding trade targets. So I'm willing to trade an Allen Robinson if you can get Cole Komet and, you know, a 2023 20, second. I'm willing to make that deal if you know that, hey, I am not contending right now because Allen Robinson likely balls out this year. I think he's going to be incredible. But if you're rebuilding, that doesn't really help you in the long run. So if you can trade Allen Robinson right now for Cole Komet and a 2023 20, second, I'm making that deal. If you can trade Devin Singletary for Cole Komet, if you can trade you know any of the wide receivers or running backs I mentioned earlier with the Patriots backfield for Cole Komet and you are a rebuilding team. I'm making those kinds of moves. If you've got any other questions about what you can be trading, hey, break down my roster because I want to know, you know, how I can improve or how I can go get these guys that you're mentioning, hit me up on Twitter at Marco underscore 14P and I will give you each and every piece, uh, piece of advice that I can give you. All right. So the last guy on my list, and this is probably the most expensive guy. He's got a lot of hype and rightfully so, Miami Dolphins wide receiver Jalen Waddle. Now, the reason he's on my list here is one, he's obviously a young, prolific wide receiver. Two, his hype has been significantly lessened with the signing of Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill is a major part of this offense. Obviously, he's going to be involved, and so Jalen Waddle is probably not going to see 145, 150 targets like he did in his rookie season. But the good news is that Jalen Waddle is probably the only player in the entire NFL who can be used exactly how Tyreek Hill is. They can be used exactly, or they can be used interchangeably in this Miami Dolphins offense. And I think the Dolphins head coaching, uh, or the Dolphins coaching staff knows that. That's why they know that having guys like Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle makes them a really creative and prolific option uh, in 2022 and beyond. They can both be used in the, obviously the receiving game. They can both be used in the run game. I hate saying maybe the Debo role, you know, like that, that is just not one of the things I like to say, um, especially talking about Debo Samuel specifically in that role. But 
really Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle can do that kind of thing, maybe to a lesser degree, but they can be hyper involved in the running game and do it efficiently because they have this insane speed. They're very, very high football IQ guys, and they are some of the most uh, proficient route runners in the NFL. And people don't really understand that when they break down what these guys can do and they think they're just speed, but they're much more than that. And I think Jalen Waddle brings that to the table. And let's dive a little further. Jalen Waddle last year, he saw just over 140 uh, targets in 2021. In 2022, with the addition of Tyreek Hill, obviously he's going to see a reduction in targets, but say you even take away 15% of his targets. He still out targets what Debo Samuel got last year by about three or four targets on the season. So he's still over 120 targets on the season, which makes him a prime candidate for a wide receiver two with upside, maybe even wide receiver one, depending on what his efficiency looks like. I think that we are going to start seeing Waddle become the 1A for this offense a lot sooner than people are expecting, maybe halfway through this season, maybe beginning of next season. So right now, Waddle is a huge buy for me in rebuilding, for rebuilding team and in Dynasty Leagues. Now, obviously, Waddle's price is pretty crazy. So what can you trade to get Jalen Waddle? I would trade a 2023 first straight up for Jalen Waddle. I know people might be hesitant. That class is crazy. And so to specify, I'll say, if you know that you aren't one of the top five or you're not likely to be one of the top five picks in 2023, I'm totally fine moving that right now. If there is a, I know if you're a rebuilding team, you kind of want to hold on to those picks, but I'm okay as a rebuilding team moving premier draft picks, uh, like I said, one oh, maybe 105, 106 and later would be, I'd be more comfortable with it. Uh, but I'm okay moving premier draft pick picks for proven young talent. Um, another thing I would be moving, w- be willing to move for Jalen Waddle. If you're a rebuilding team, try to see if you can trade uh, Cooper Cup to get Jalen Waddle and, you know, a pair of 2023 20, seconds. Jalen Waddle on a 2023 20, first, depending on what your scoring format is, you know, especially full PPR leagues. If you can go move a guy like Cooper Cup when you're rebuilding, building, that is a huge boost to what you can do for the future. And you're not taking an enormous step down when you're going after a guy like Jalen Waddle. So if you can add, you know, that 2023 20, first, a pair of 2023 20, seconds, um, or even Jalen Waddle and, you know, an Isaiah Spiller, Rashad White, and a 2024, 20, you know, second or third. Those are the kinds of deals I'm willing to make to offload some of the premier talent as a rebuilding team. Again, if you've got questions, hit me up on Twitter at Marco underscore 14P. I'll get to any questions you might have. Thank you for hanging out. Don't forget to subscribe to Front Yard Fantasy and I will see you next time. Peace.